Are we ready? Are we? <laughs> We're just gonna wing it. No more outline. Like, bahala na. Like, cheers. Like, cheers to water. Mm. Always hydrate yourself. <laughs> Everybody, how are you all doing? It's been a while since we've actually had an episode wherein Jeek and I are just gonna talk. So yeah, yeah so welcome to another episode of Pen News. I'm Ryan. I'm Jika. And for today's episode, we're going to talk about latest acquisitions. Yeah. Yeah. New things we bought. It's Christmas time soon. It's 2022 soon. There's yeah. a new variant coming, but we did not acquire it. Hopefully. Hopefully Thank not. You. Hopefully not. Hopefully so, not. welcome to another episode of Pen Noobs. And today we're going to talk about the stuff we just recently got. Are we going to talk about Noob Discoveries, Jika? I actually have no idea, but I can give a bit of context as to why our episode is like this. Um, sure. In essence, in the Philippines, once you hit the Burr months, meaning sep- October, sept- which comes before sure. September, which means <laughs> September. Okay, that's when Christmas starts, and yeah. that's the time when like our work schedule pretty much amps up sometime around September all the way to October, and then we get to chill out after October all the way till December. So like. Our brains are pretty much set for like two or three things. So the first thing is rest. Two is eating or dieting for a bit so that when Christmas comes, you feel great. You feel like you earned all of the space in your stomach and the weight. Um, And then third is shopping. (laughs) And being Filipinos, Christmas is a really big deal for us. Again, we start putting up our lights and our parwells, our Christmas stars around the houses and around the areas in September. So like we've been in this state wherein we're like, we're going to shop, but we're going to also try to do it mindfully, try to, you know, talk about, think about what we're going to acquire, what we plan to acquire all the way to give us essentially a culmination of 2021. Because this is leading all the way up to January 1st in 2022. So we were in the mood to shop and we did. Exactly. (laughs) to shop and maybe we might shop some more but not i hope not i hope not but this episode basically is us sharing what we have acquired so far leading towards 2022 um and one of the things we did notice is that chica and i both got ourselves a grill pen for 2021 <laughs> and i think for some of you you've seen it already or heard about it <laughs> In the previous episode or have seen it in our IG page. But if you have not done so or have not heard about it yet, this is the episode we're in. We're going to actually just talk about and appreciate the grail pants we've recently acquired. Ryan hasn't posted his yet, so he does have to post it before the episode comes out. But <laughs> other than that, like it's kind of hard. I think it was like last week or two weeks ago, we were thinking about what we were going to talk about this episode. And I said, let's talk about our grills. But like how noobish like, started as noobs. Now we're here. Like it's kind of a big deal for us really to have acquired our grill pen. So let's get to it. Are we going to do noob discoveries? Well, we can actually talk about the stuff I recently acquired as part of noob discoveries. Okay. You can go first, because I think my new discovery has something to do with my singular acquisition in the last two or three months. Go ahead. Beautiful. Okay, so my new discovery would be, it's not about pants, but it's about planners. And what I'll be showing um, to those who are watching on YouTube, you get to see it, but those who are listening, I'll do my best to... (laughs) be as descriptive as possible (laughs) but if ever you'd like to see it i'd recommend that you actually listen and watch on youtube okay so my new discovery would be planners okay so yes the wrappers are 
showing us the video. Okay, so these are two planners. And one is the take a note planner. And the other one is a nothing planner. What do you guys notice? Wow, being a teacher here. Don't they look exactly the same? Yes, teacher, teacher. Are they the same size? Or is, yeah, oh my gosh, even the spine's the same. Yeah, the same spine. And they have the same, um, what, what do we call this? Well, I call this cover and cover for Hobonichi, but I guess this is the plastic cover. Oh. It's the same. Interesting. It's the same plastic. So the, the, the T, well, it's not really T, but just the story is that NTU Bookstore, NTUP Bookstore, that's National Taiwan University Press Bookstore. I hope I did not sabotage that. Correct, but it, correct us if we're wrong, yeah. So, so. <laughs> that's NTUP Bookstore in Taiwan used to um, distribute, take a note. This month. And I think it was in 2022 where and there was a quote unquote falling out and Take a Note wanted to be independent. Mm -hmm. And so they separated from NTUP bookstore and they've decided to create the Take a Note planner on their own. And I'm not really sure what prompted NTUP bookstore to create their own. Probably they still have supplies of the paper and that's why they created their own version of a planner, which is the nothing planner. So there. What's there. the differences between the two planners? Okay, that's the thing. Actually, I haven't really opened them yet. So <laughs> we're going to open the moment. Hey, so we're going to open it in this episode. So yes, for the first time, we're going to have a noob discovery that's kind of long because it's going to be like a an unboxing or actually not really unboxing anymore, but unwrapping okay. of planners. Okay. So now, first off, maybe we can talk about the packaging. So the take a note planner, those who have it, it comes with this nice box. There you have it. There. Jika's waiting, still waiting for her to come <laughs> ever let's not talk about it let's just pray that it comes before christmas i'm sure it will i'm sure it will this is the packaging however for the nothing planner it looks like a parcel so there okay so there you have it so very different packaging now sorry i don't have any more the other details like the paper and yada yada but they kind of differ but what's really interesting is that how they look like when you open and remove them from the packaging. Look at where the stickers are located. They're like, it's the same. Mm, upper so, right-hand corner of the cover. Right corner of the cover. So very interesting there. Now also take a look at the spine. I think you've seen that already. It looks exactly the same. So pretty much you might even assume that it's the same company. Uh, it's just one company that created these Planners. Okay, so time for us now to do the unwrapping. Okay. Yay! Okay, some ASMR sound while I try to use imagery, imagistic language to talk about what was just seen. So again, just as a review, the spine is naked and the binding method is very similar across the Nothing Planner and the Take a Note Planner. Um, mm. They are bound in such a way that when you open them, they will lay flat. So give or take around 10 to 20 sheets are likely sewn together and then folded and then piled on top of each other and then sewn again. So that's what it looks like. I'm very interested because a naked spine to me is very, very attractive, although it's also very prone to dirt and dust. So that's I hope that case. <laughs> That's interesting, Jika, that you find the naked spine interesting. Actually, that's one of the things that I don't like about the planner, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't appeal to me. Unless I actually put a cover, of course. But if it doesn't have a cover, I don't know. I just don't find it that appealing. It feels like a skeleton. <laughs> ah, that's why I like it. I mean, like it being white paper or like creamy white paper, it looks so skeletal. So that's interesting. 
How's the unwrapping? Is it the struggle? Uh, well, it's a bit of a struggle. Sorry, guys. But here, I'm done already with the take a note. Okay. So uh, maybe some of you are asking, like, why does Ryan have two planners? Well, it's really more of my curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of my curiosity. It's just, you know, I'm just curious. Actually, I really intended to get the take a note planner as my journal for 2022. But I saw someone post, it's Sheila Plants. She's on Instagram. Hi, Sheila. Thank you very much for helping me acquire this Nothing Planner, which I'll be showing in a short while. So I already ordered a take a note since I think September. Yep. Is it September? Yeah. I think yep. it was September when Wish um, stationarycafe.com in Manila um, opened pre-orders. Okay, so here is the take a note. Planner. I like the color. Is very serious. Is yeah. very neat with a gold foil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yes, it. to the gold foil. Okay, so then the first page is ta -da, nothing. <laughs> well, you might you might confuse the next planners by saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it has nothing. It's just black. Okay, and then you have here twenty twenty two. Okay, I hope. I'm Doing justice to this and then here, there. Okay. Calendars, trackers. Okay. Calendar, tracker. And then I think after that, it already goes to the, oh, it goes to the monthly calendar. Mm -hmm. So there. All right. So those who are not familiar or those who are curious as to what the take a note um, pages would look like, aside from the monthly. This is how the weekly spread would look like. I hope you guys can see it well. So it has a bunch of vertical spaces. So per page, there are two um, vertical columns. columns. Yes. Yeah, there are columns, two columns. And then um, in the first column you get to see a more or less like a summary mm -hmm. of the week and the following one would be the first day of that week mm -hmm. and then it spreads out up to the next two pages until that week actually ends quite smart so it's pretty much like eight columns and then in the in two set of, of pages is that right yeah and then the first column for that week would be the summary so mm -hmm. there that's how it's actually designed and it's it runs until the end of the year it's interesting so excited to see how i will be using this for my journal for 2022 is you it also get is it grid yes it. it's grid okay it's grid supremacy okay as far as i know um it, okay so affirming it's grid because i haven't gotten mine but it's grid. It's 68 GSM, the thicker version of Tomorrow River Paper. Um, right. That's good. You got the A5, am I right? Yes, it's an A5. There's an A5, but there's also an A6. Okay, so yeah. like for anyone who wants to get one, I think there are still suppliers out there. So yeah, good luck with that. I think um, they also ship abroad now, but I'm not really sure about the terms for that. But the TAN or the TAN is really interesting. Um, I'm getting mine and it's going to ideally take the pressure off of daily journaling because at least you've only got half a page or half a column to work with from the usual A5. So it's going to yeah. be interesting. What are you going to use yours for? Like the daily? Um, which one? The, the take a note? It's going to be for as a planner. Oh, as a planner. Sorry, not sorry, a... sorry. Journal, journal, journal. It's going oh. to be my daily journal. Sorry. I get it. I get it. Time for nothing. This is the nothing. Okay, so pretty much the same as the take a note. Let's try to see what's the. It also is blank. <laughs> <laughs> color as the cover. Oh, interesting. They look exactly the same so far. And then you have the first page, which has nothing. The same. It's pretty much the same as take a note. Mm -hmm. And then you have the next set of pages is the month, months, um, the yearly calendar for 2022.
2021 and 2023. It reminds okay. me of the Hobonichi, I think. Yeah, and it's Hobonichi. more colorful. Yeah, more sorry. Colorful. Yeah, now that you now that you tell me that, yeah, it is more colorful. Yeah. And then you have the um you have all the dates within the year, and it has these boxes. It reminds me of the Hobonichi Weeks index, yeah. The money. And and also the traveler's notebook um, planner insert. Yeah, reminds me of that. And then we have, okay, now we have the monthly um, calendar, monthly spread. It has the calendar, but I forget to see, um, compared to the take a note, I think it takes up more space. I mean the dates. It's not like the take a note where the space, the boxes are a bit small. Or actually, I take that back. It's exactly the same. <laughs> I take that back. It's exactly the same. But the difference is that you get to see here. There's pretty much like a Gantt chart at the bottom. Oh, there is. It's like a month long habit tracker at the bottom. So very much reminiscent of Ujibun Tacho. Yeah. From before, yeah. So yay! That all of that. Uh huh. And then let's go to the daily. I'm curious with the daily. Okay, so this is where they differ. The difference is that it's still the same. Like there's like four days or like, yeah, four days. Three to four days. Mm -hmm. There are four boxes, but it's not vertical. It's now horizontal oh. boxes. Oh, I did not know this. Can you please put pictures on our page so that you too can help me with this? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So there, um, the spread would be different because it's not vertical, it's horizontal. So, but there, the, the, not, the time is quite discreet. There's actually still the time. I'm not sure if you can see it through this lining, but basically there's still a timetable, uh -huh. but the color is just very discreet. So if like if you want to disregard it or you want to follow it, you can use it. So there. Okay, so there. There you have it with take a note and the nothing planner. Um, have I decided how I'll use these planners? Take a note, I'll take a note. <laughs> In my day for the nothing planner do i have anything planned out for it yet nothing yet <laughs> as of this time <laughs> so there you have it um i might like think about it carefully whether which one i'll be using and which one i might not really use um maybe i'll sell it or maybe i'll just give it to a friend whoever needs a planner we'll we'll see We'll see how that, that turns out. But yes, there you have it. That's my new discovery. The Take a Note Planner and the Nothing Planner. Two planners that look exactly the same. <laughs> Almost exactly the same. Just Almost exactly the same. Because at least the cover does shout, right? There are two cover options for the Nothing Planner. You got the teal one, but there's like an ochre orange one? Yeah, I think it's another one. But that one is slimmer. I believe it's slimmer. It's, it's more for project management i believe yeah also, there are two versions of the nothing planner yes there are two versions of the nothing planner um this one in teal is like a daily uh, well not really daily but like it's more of like in every week you have a couple of boxes and then i think for the orange one it's a different one sorry i don't have the exact words to describe it but they say it's more for project management. It's a little bit slimmer compared to this one, to the teal one. I'm not getting a nothing planner because, <laughs> and it ties in with my new discovery. And it's like this really recent feeling that I've been talking with Ryan about. My new discovery is pen piece. <laughs> Beautiful. Because Ryan was talking about like after he got his pilot custom 823 and like he didn't buy anything for three months after that at least that's what it felt like am i right that it took you yeah. three or around three, three or so months to buy something new and i've got that right now after i got my grail i mean i go online and see things that 
I want, but not necessarily like I super duper require. So, so far since I got my grail, I don't know when I got it, almost a month ago now, I think, and at the start of November, I have had 10 piece. It is beautiful. And I'm trying my best not to get, um, how would you, I'm trying my best not to get taken away or like washed away by the tide of the, of everyone's desire to shop. Because I've been to malls fairly recently, because again, Christmas in the Philippines lasts X number of months. And I go to the mall briefly, following protocols, by the way. <laughs> and I go to our resident scribe or analog shop. And then I go there, I'm just like, yeah, it's nice. but. It's not my grail. <laughs> or like, it's nice, but I already have my hobo cheese. It's nice, but there's always like this but that comes in. And, and I'm just like, wow, this, this is peace. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. My wallet's really happy. It's no longer cursing at me after like three or three to six months of staggered payments for the last two big friend purchases I did. So it's great to have my salary to myself. <laughs> Yeah. That's my new discovery. Ten piece. Good for you. I think at some point, yes, I did achieve, or hopefully I am feeling the pen piece as well, because so far um, nothing has sparked joy. Or if ever there are, you just take a look at your grill pen and be like, you spent a lot. Like, no, <laughs> look yeah. at that. That should keep you quiet for, I don't <laughs> know. <months. laughs> a few months, half a year, two a year, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. And so, that moment of peace, kidding. <laughs> take a look at now your our grill pens, since we are on the topic of grill pens at this point. Yeah. Oh, grill pens. So I guess we're going to get to it. Hi, guys. We're going to talk about our pens. Again, we started out as noobs X number of months ago, even before we started this podcast. And now we... Or fairly recently, we both decided to invest because, I mean, I guess there's no better time than now because um, we're not really spending so much on our, like we're spending on living, but the, what do you call it? The leisure stuff, we're not spending so much anymore. And over the course of the past few months, we've learned to become a bit more mindful of the purchases that we make. If X number of months ago, we just get a pen, any pen to like get us across the season or <laughs> get us through the month so that we feel like we got something. This time around, we've been making purchases that ask that we pay in installments or that we actually save up over the course of a few months um, in order to relish what we've got so far. And do you want to raise your pens at the same time, Ryan, just so that everyone sees what they are? Okay, because they haven't seen yours yet. Okay. Yeah, actually. <laughs> okay, we're going to count and raise our pens in three, two, and one. Ah, they're so us. Like, that pen is so Ryan, and this pen is so Jika. I know. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to talk about it. But I'm currently holding, and you've seen it on Instagram, the Pilot Custom Urushi, the big one, the super-duper big pen, and Ryan is holding up a... It's a Mont Blanc. My sorry, I might sabotage the pronunciation. <laughs> sorry, my my stuck. My stuck. Legrand, Legrand. So it's one for six. Um, special edition around the world in eighty days. So it's based on the book Around the World in eighty days by Jules Verne. Oh my gosh! Oh. Mine is red and Ryan's is blue. Duh. <laughs> Ryan, sorry, you got <laughs> muted there, but yes. Yeah. Yes, so mine is blue um, with, I think it has a bit of purple to it. Oh. I don't know, um, when I researched about the color, um, they were talking about the, 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 the choice of color when I was watching the Mont Blanc videos. They were talking about how it's a mix of blues and there's a bit of purple um, into it so that it really looks like a deep, you know, deep sea there. That's basically what's, that's the color that they wanted to achieve with, with this one. Okay. So why so, did you get that pen? Hmm? Why did, this is the interview time. My curiosity is why did you get that grail? 
Okay. So actually, for quite some time now, I've been thinking about getting a Mont Blanc. But the thing is, is it Mont Blanc? Or should I silently put T? Mont Blanc? <laughs> Either know. way. Standard Filipino English. We can kind of mispronounce this. It's fine. Okay. Standard Filipino English is Mont Blanc. <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> okay. Mont Blanc. Okay. So there. I decided I've always wanted a Mont Blanc pen. Um, but I would, didn't even really know how it performs. Mm -hmm. But I do get to see a lot of positive reviews about the Mont Blanc pen, specifically the 149. I think that's the biggest, that's like the big daddy. It's like the, <laughs> it's like the mafia king, mafia head <laughs> pen. <laughs> I'm just kidding there. But yes, that's like the big pen, the big OG pen. Um, but I did get, one that is a piston filler because as you all know, I do have a bias for piston fillers for you know quite some time ever since I got the Pilot Custom um, E23. Although that's not a piston filler, that's a vacuum filler. Um, and then when I got a bunch of Pelicans, um, it was also piston filler. So I really like piston fillers as opposed to those with cartridges. It's not that it's wrong or I don't like it really. It's just... I currently have a preference for those with that are piston fillers instead of those with converters as of this time. So aside from the fact that I wanted a Mont Blanc, I also wanted something quite symbolic. Um, I was I've been intrigued about the 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 Little Prince collection. Mm -hmm. So I think that was very popular for the past three years. And so after three years of creating different collections they've decided to move on with a new literary work, which is Around the World in 80 Days. Um, and to be honest, before I even purchased this pen, I listened to an audiobook and I also read the book and finished it before I actually decided to, to bite the bullet and actually <laughs> purchase the pen because I wanted to make sure that the narrative, the, the literary work, referred to in this object <laughs> is something I resonate with. And um, the text, although of course it was written um, at a time wherein it, it talks a lot about traveling, it probably talks about that industrial revolution mm -hmm. and all that. Um, I think the concept of traveling, taking risks, would be one of the things that really caught my attention because the protagonist in the, the novel took a risk, lots of risk. And he said that he will um, bet on being able to go around the world in 80 days. And so it aligns with my, my, my desire to travel soon and also very symbolic of the the risk or probably, you know, um, me betting on something and that is having a change of environment in the near future. I like that. I like that. It's like, wow. Okay. You actually thought about it. <laughs> I, did not I did. You know that um, I, I, like, I like to compare my tendency for pen purchases or just anything to be the same way that I process art because like a lot of people well I'm a so we're lit teachers we're English literature teachers so our tendency is to close read things right so like that's why why we don't enjoy <laughs> that's why we can't enjoy anything but um, when it comes to art and I am a student of art like I, I in high school I, I went to a special art school where I majored in visual arts so I did painting I did sculpture I did the whole shabam and what I realized the reason why I went out of it, I feel, is that one, it wasn't in my heart, but also that um, I didn't want to mess with something that I enjoyed. Like, I have a tendency to overthink, I have a tendency to overread. And when it comes to art, I just, I just know that when I see a big piece that I thoroughly enjoy, I just want to keep it as pure as possible. Like when I went to London, I think it was in 2019, and I saw the entire Rothko, Mark Rothko area, I went in, I understood nothing, but I knew that I was moved, that kind of thing. So 
like when I, I I realized that I could I have two grills. The first one is Kafka, the Mont Blanc Kafka. Highly oh, improbable, like, right? Like who's gonna I'm not gonna be able to get that. So that's one notion of the grail. The other grail is and always has been the pilot custom Urushi Vermilion. Cause I don't know what it is about it, or I could pinpoint its parts, but it wouldn't be enough. Like I just know that I was moved by this pin. Like it is a work of art, it is on brand. I I'm just like holding it up. Um yeah, it, it's there are no words it to me it's like looking at a painting and I'm really relieved by the fact that it's nothing nothing too special if you think about it because it's not like one of a kind they they don't lose stock of this pen it's just a really expensive and specially made pen um it's 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 ordinary but still also extraordinary at the same time see i'm at the loss of words i'm trying to like negotiate the contradictions in this pen because like whereas you had like some symbolic in the life parallelisms in place i was just like this pen moved me this pen moved me since the start and when i got the chance to get it thank you mr alden thank you sir alden eternally he special ordered it for me like it wasn't even posted on fountain pen palenque he was like i can get it for you straight from the shop. Okay, mm -hmm. installments, thank you. And then I did, and the, like each time it just felt closer and closer and then it's here now and it's in my hands and I write with it every day. And I can't write well with it. Like I write crappily with it because the, the <laughs> I'm so not used to soft nibs. It's super soft because the gold, the gold's way better, I think. Um, but I'm trying to get used to it, but it's, it's just, oh. Done. I am done <laughs> squeezing, fangirling. Yes, I'm. That's my reason for getting it. I love it. I love it. Well, I do think we do have our different intentions or reasons for getting a fountain pen. Probably for me, it was just a bit of I wanted my fountain pen purchases from now on until the next few years will be more symbolic. Like there's an event, there's an occasion, or like. Mm -hmm something to remind me about the value of the pen. So that when I look at it, it's not like, oh, I was just hungry or I was just like, <laughs> I yeah. wanted a pen. <laughs> but I would look at the pen and I'd be reminded like, oh, this is something that I got myself because I was making, I was take, I was planning to take a risk. Or like when I take a look at a pen, oh, I got it for Christmas because yada, yada, yada. And then basically I want a story. And so I do want to my fountain pen journey, my pen journey in the coming years to be more of like a story, a narrative that I would be able to look back to and it will be a rich story and not just some story, oh, I just got it because well, I, know, I just wanted a pen. <laughs> like, I felt that was kind of sad. So that's how I wanted to, you know, to remember my acquisition moving forward. Wow, adulting. <laughs> it's such adulting. That's true. Cause like, I guess again, we're we're on opposite ends or different ends or different perspectives when it comes to pen acquisition. Like, how do you call it? If you say that when you look at your pen collection, you want the story attached or like your narratives attached to the pens. Like when I open my pen case, I just think that okay, I look at each pen and they all have given me different feelings they incite different they evoke different emotions in me at a different point in time so like again excitement for the custom urushi vermilion but also peace right at the same time but when i look back at my at my pair my lovely pair of um sailor mil colors that was just like i'm so happy for you companionship <laughs> that kind of joy when I look at my Twinkle Milky Way, it's it's just like out of body, like transcendent. It's it's all happy stuff. Like obviously, I I don't think I'm gonna get the pen out of sadness. <laughs> I hope not. I, I hope <laughs> that there won't come a day when that happens. But when I look at my pen case right now, I see very good decisions. I see that I've I've moved my acquisition practice from one that was just like you said about hunger to one about like deliberate 
curation of my emotions. Wow. And some maybe it'll come out on the page when I start journaling for 2022. It's an interesting way to look at it. I love it. I love, I love how we have our own set of intentions for purchasing a pen. One, it could be through because of a narrative or it could be because of an emotion or it could even be to celebrate certain milestones. So we all have our different intentions or reasons for purchasing a pen. And I do believe that we all acquire a pen for a reason. And we, we're not here really to defend that reason because mm-hmm. it's your choice. Yeah. And you make it special. That's true. But before it sounds like the end of an episode, we got to just, we got to describe the pens because like our cameras aren't the best way. Like, they aren't the clearest. So like we will supplement it with some vivid imagery. I actually don't know exactly what's on Ryan's pen. I'm most interested by that one. So go sure. ahead. So the Mont Blanc pen that I have has a lot of details to it. Well, I think I've already mentioned the color. So it's basically dark blue. Is it dark blue or like, it's not really royal blue. It's more of like dark blue with some hints of purple to it. Basically, it's supposed to remind you of like a deep, dark sea. Oh, sea. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there are a lot of details on the pen. Actually, interestingly, this is the first pen in platinum or rhodium trim that I actually like. You, you know, I've been talking about, oh, I want everything to be like gold plated, gold hardware. Mm-hmm. But this is a pen which I feel it really looks well with this trim. It really looks very, not really masculine, but it looks not even proper. I, I can't find the right word for it. It's just dapper. It's just dapper. Yeah, I guess dapper would be the best word. Okay, so you have, the, of course, the the logo there. The Did they call this a snow cap? Yeah, the snow yeah. cap. <laughs> Top. And then when you go to the cap, actually, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there's actually a number engraved there. So one is um, 118 days. The other one is... 80 days. So 18 days and 80 because the pen was supposed to represent the first 18 days in the novel. So I'm assuming that the next collection for 2022 will be for the next set of days. (laughs) So there. Yeah. Um, the, The clip has this what do we call this? Is this ace? Oh, is it a spade or yeah, a clover? Spade. Yeah, it's supposed to be one of those um, the symbols when when you when you use the cards. Yeah. So you have heart, diamond, spade, spade. And clover. Yeah. Right. So it represents the the wager that the protagonist actually um, betted on um, when he was. I think it was it was some sort of like a club, and then they were they were were they were talking about a lot of things, and then he proposed or he posed the idea, the crazy idea that he can go around the world in eighty days, and he was betting on it. So there, um, and then also the cap. Oh no, doesn't show well. Okay, there, there you have it. You get to see like, oh, it's, I can like see it's, it's, yeah, so it's supposed to be like the waves. Yeah, the waves. And here is actually the steamboat, which um, the protagonist rode together with his servant. So there. Okay. And then what else? What other details can we see here? Actually, there are also the other symbols found in the in the cards, like heart, diamond. It's it's actually here. It's engraved here. It's just all over the place. You won't be able to see it unless you look closely. Teacher, teacher. Why is the butt also shiny? That sounds so bad, but like the butt's shiny. And it's kind of like a bullet. Right. Actually, um, you will get to see, if you'll take note of the the, the butt, (laughs) the end of the pen, it it looks like it has a bunch of holes. It looks like it has a bunch of holes to it to remind you of something very nautical. 
there. You get to see that, like there are a bunch of like circles there. It reminds me of like a boat. Okay. Yeah. I think it, I'm not really sure why Mont Blanc decided to do like, the end to be in this, in this um, I don't know, in this design. But I think the other um, special editions that they have, like the, the Little Prince one, is also um, in the same you know, design. So there. And then finally, the nib um, is also interesting because I hope you guys can see it. OK, you guys can see it. But <laughs> the nib has a hot air balloon. Oh, I'm so good. Yeah, although it doesn't really refer to the um, mode of transportation, mm -hmm. but it refers to a different story or a different narrative written by Jules Burns. So, so there. So they didn't go around the world in a hot air balloon like all of the media has to <laughs> Well, I think in the first 18 days, no. No, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Okay, time to read the book. If we yeah. have time, if we have time. <laughs> So that is the pen um, that I got as a grill pen. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the best ink for it yet. Like, um, do do um, argue with us or like talk to us in the comments about your thoughts about putting only Mont Blanc inks on a Mont Blanc pen. Because right now I just use a um a vial given to me by a friend who also has a Mont Blanc pen. So I was just asking, like, oh, do you have any extra Mont Blanc ink? I just want to have this inked up. And um it's kind of like color brown red and it doesn't really match with the color of the pen, but it's okay. It's a nice, it's a nice ink. It's just not the best fit for the pen body. So there. Yeah. Brian's yeah. aiming for the perfume pen, uh, for the perfumed ink that Harry Fox Scribbler was talking about last episode. Yeah. If yes. anyone has but it's just so expensive. Like how much? <laughs> how much in Philippine money? Philippine money is like 4000 for an ink. <laughs> it's like you're buying a perfume. Like almost $100. That, that's a yeah. lot. That's a lot, right? Okay. Close to a Twisby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. I hope you find the ink. The I pen hope so and too. The ink come together because, yeah, I'm not too particular, but I understand you were telling me, I think, last week or two weeks ago about like Mont Blanc's repair policy. Yeah, I think it has something to do with that. So, um, what, what is I, I've been, exactly? I've been reading on uh, <laughs> some, some um, forum online. And um, I think it was also on Reddit. <laughs> Again, this is not like legitimate information. It's more of just very interesting stuff I get to read from people. Like, oh, oh, so someone said like, oh, Mont Blanc can tell that you, you did not use their ink because it will smell. <laughs> they can smell the pen and they can tell, oh, you did not use a Mont Blanc ink because they, they said there's something about the formulation of their inks that uh, gives it a different smell or like it doesn't even have any smell compared to other inks. But then again, that's just some of the stuff I've been reading online. Is it true? I'm not sure. <laughs> Should we trust it? I guess there's no harm in at least trying to consider it, but it doesn't mean you have to have faith in it, right? Yeah, and given the current like ink issues and reissues with the Mont Blanc brand, uh, we're bound to question um, to what extent this policy is in place. So, I mean, do your own research. We do our own. Oh, gosh, it sounds like such a trigger warning when you tell people to do their own research. But do research, okay? Be mindful of your research. Do your fact checks check from legitimate sources, so on and so forth, because we need to do it not just for our pens, not just for our stationery, nor our inks, but also for society. And before I end up talking about the current or the upcoming elections, let me talk about what my pen looks like. Yeah, go. <laughs> go for it. What a segue, what a transition. My pen is pretty plain. Um, you guys know that we love flat tops up in here, up in the pendants podcast. So obviously my grill will have a flat top, but as compared to the usual pilot pens, 
Um, the flat top of this one has a bit of gold, has a bit of gold on it. So it's usually plain, but there's a ring of gold up on top. My favorite part is the finial, that, that, that subtle gold thing, and also the big clip and the ball on the clip. I've heard that some people actually don't like the ball on the pilot pins, but like, whatever. I love it. Give it to me. Because it looks so nice whenever you like hang it. Of course, it's it's like huge for my 411 self to have this kind of pen of this size and the ball this size, but I like it. So we're keeping it. It's in vermilion, which is like the brightest red that I am happy with. It's almost the same color. It's a brighter version of my hair. Um, this is actually the color that I get my lipstick most in when I want the red. I like the contrast between the black and the red and the gold. Everything's in gold. And in the, what do you call this? What do you call this part on the cap? The band. Oh, there. Cap band. In the cap band. Ooh, mine can zoom in. Looky. It says, I think, I'm looking at my camera. It says, made in Japan. Oh, it says, pilot made in Japan. And then it has three stars. Three stars engraved over there. And the body, and I think most of the cap is, is in Urushi lacquer, is Urushi lacquered, but of course, it's mostly plastic still. The big whopper, however, is that nib. What the oh hell is that? It's huge. Is that like, an injection? I know, right? Like, you could get vaccinated with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What's what's the vaccine? <laughs> um, diamine, diamine espresso, one hundred fifty limited edition. <laughs> That's what it's got. It's the most formal ink I've got, and like it feels inappropriate to put like sakura pink or like the ginger ink that I got, the pickle ginger ink that I got in it. So I put in a serious ink. The nib size, I mean, you can see it right now. It's huge. It's two toned. So there's gold on the outside, and then like the other gold, the silver platinum looking gold um, on the inside. It's a size 30 is huge. Um, most um, custom 912s and 823s come with a 15 or a 10. So this is either double or triple that size. And trust that my teensy hands are having difficulty with it. There's a sweet spot for writing because the pen is really big to grip. I mean, how's yours? How 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 grippy is yours, Ryan? Well, actually, um, this is a bit smaller than the custom 823, so it's not that difficult to to hold. Yeah, okay. but of obviously no capping. Like Hell. what? So big. Oh, no to posting. Me too. My sister tried to post my pen when oh I got the first day that I got it. And then she was like, oh, and I was already screaming, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know those slow motion things in film when people yeah. are trying to do the bad thing? And that was exactly it. On the day that I got it, I was like, look at my new pen. I mean, it's about the same price as your bike. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was it. But um, it's really hard to hold for me because I am, I do have small hands. Um, so I tend to, and people will hate me for this, um, I tend to touch the upper corner of the nib itself. Mm -hmm. There's that. Um, I'm trying, however, to also practice not doing that by lightening my pressure. So I realized that since it's a very soft nib because it's 18K gold, um, I think that Sailor King of Pens are the only ones that run up to 21K. So it's very soft and my pen pressure is really hard by default. So whenever I'd write a line with my usual pressure, it'd bend. But, get, but it's actually been very interesting to lighten my hand so that the lines that appear are straighter. Um, it's a pen that I am struggling with, admittedly, despite it being a grail, but it's a struggle that I think is teaching me a lot about myself. Okay, we're back to mindfulness now. Um, it's teaching me about just how to be um, in the writing process, in the writing moment. So that's very interesting. I thought that I'd have an easy time with my grail pen because you imagine your grail to be all that you thought it would be. This one is not, but I'm learning. 
and I'm being in the moment while I am using it. It's very pretty. We'll post more pictures. Everything that you cannot see clearly via our cameras, we will post on Instagram, but that's it. Pretty pen. We'll post Instagram. Ooh. Oh, is that it for a real episode? Yeah, I think that's it for our, well, for my new discovery, the take a note and the nothing planner. And then of course our grails. We'd like to know more about your grail pens. Um, hope you can share it with us um, on the comments or actually I think we're, we're going to have more or less like um, a QA and a on our Instagram where you get to share your grail pens and then we'll get to like you know, celebrate them <laughs> on our IG story. It reminds me, I've been so out of it. We haven't been posting new week name drop. So um, trust that guys, we've just been in a quote unquote slump based on the seasonality of our jobs and also the Christmas season. So we're gonna get back to it. Um, and the better word, pag nakaluwag na. <laughs> when things lighten up, um, because we do miss the community, we do miss partaking in it other than just turning out these episodes. Also, my birthday is coming up, so maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exciting. Exciting. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to give people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for now, guys. Let's talk about our grails on social media soon. We miss you. We hope you miss us. And thanks for tuning in, as usual. Thanks for tuning in, guys. To Once again, episode. another episode of Pen. Our next episode.